for delay. <laughs> Uh, so I guess finally I, we can start. I can start my talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, yeah, thank you, thank you, Professor Murdi, for inviting me for giving me a chance to talk in this uh, Fuse Number Three seminar, and it's a uh, it's I think my first time to give a talk uh, on the, on online. I mean, to Toronto, I guess overseas. <laughs> okay. So uh, I. Have, um, uh, pardon me if I suddenly I yawn a bit because it's, uh, it's 1 a.m. on my site. So, <laughs> but I will control myself. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, today I'll talk about this so called Ital Wow Kerner and Greenberg conjecture. Okay. So, uh, basically, the idea is pretty much you know, it's best uh, basic classical Iwasawa theory. Uh, so, basically, we would like to understand the variation of Ital Wow Kerners in chaotic Lee extensions. Okay. And of course, the basic case essentially goes back to Iwasawa, where he first proved such a result for the class groups in a ZP extension, or more precisely the P primary part of the class group. Okay. So basically, we, we will review some part of the Iwasawa, what, the Iwasawa classical case. And then after that, we introduce the Itawa kernel and describe the basically the rough ideas behind the proofs. Okay. So as a start, we recall what the ZP extension is. So it's as usual, uh, so throughout F will of course divide a number of few, basically means a finite extension of some Q, F of, of Q, rational few. So basically we're interested in a sequence of say number of fields, then we start with F contains F1, F2, where each of these F ends is Galois extension. And the Galois group is given by Z mod PN. And basically I take the composite of the union of all these uh, Fuse, okay, and this is a Galois extension with a uh, which isomorphic to ZP, okay, and hence and hence for we call this a ZP extension, okay. And of course, just some remarks. Uh, so basically, for this multiplicity group, uh, the Galois group, we use gamma to denote. Okay, is actually where where the multiplication is written by uh, multiplicity. Of course, this is more cos probably a bit cosmetic, but uh, but we still have to do it. And of course, uh, throughout the talk, uh, my prime is always odd. Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, a lot of my this work is uh, comb logical. So uh, when p equal to two, there's always something funny that happens. So uh, throughout this talk, p will always be odd. Okay. Okay. So of course, the most basic example of ZP extension is basically the psychotomic. So basically, if you take a number of few, and we are drawing all the p power p roots of unity, and you look at this extension. So basically, of course, this is priori not ZP, not necessarily ZP, but the Gala group is basically some ZP times some finite cyclic group. Uh, the finite cyclic group is by order dividing P minus one. Okay. And if you take the, the fixed view of this uh, F tilde, which will give you our F psychotomic view. Okay. This is what we define by our F psychotomic ZP extension. Okay. And of course, uh, by definition, this is the Gala group of this psychotomic ZP extension is ZP. And uh, what it was, uh, so now we can talk about the Iwasawa associated formulas for class group. So basically now we have a F infinity, which is a ZP extension of F. And of course the intermediate, intermediate subfields that are denoted by Fn. Okay. And so this is just some notation which we will use. Uh, so basically for a finite group, a median group, we write E of N to be basically the exponent, the P exponent of the P primary part of the group. So basically the, as you can def define, basically it's a number such that p to the power e to the power n is the size of the p primary part of this finite group. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so in even and so this is a classical result of Iwasawa, which goes back to nineteen fifty nine. So basically, we can show you you he can he shows that there exists some integers, mu and lambda, which is, is dependent on the ZP extension but independent of the n. Okay. Such that basically this exponent of the class group. Of the p primary part of the class group, of course, grow and have this order mu p n plus lambda n plus some o one, where o one is some basically we can take this constant basic notation. Okay, so basically for n large enough, so this is a classical Iwasawa. Okay, and uh, so basically we, so of course, uh, ever since this, there's of course many works on this sort of direction. So of course. Uh, it's the first, the Iwasawa first of a kind, which has a sort of this sort of precise growth for P class group. 
in an infinite tower of number of fields. Okay. And say for the multiple ZP extension, okay. uh, uh, so there are some formulas of this form, which let's go back to Koku Monsky, probably around 1980s. Okay. So in this case, I didn't write a formula, but the basic the formula have this form with mu and some p to the power of dn, where d is the dimension of the ZPD. And some lambda pn, p to the power d minus one, and o will be some o of p to the power d minus one to the power n, okay, for ZPD extension. Okay. Uh, for non commutative PID ex extensions, uh, form, there are some formulas like, for me, go back to Perbeck, this is like 2011. Okay, but Perbeck's formula is more only for pn portion, okay, rather than p infinity. So she's looking at the pn torsion at each level n and see how. Uh, how this grow, okay? And uh, some recent work of Antonio, uh, he studies in uh, he has a he studies a four state extension, okay? But he's and uh, I have some work of my students and myself extended some part of Antonio's work, but our work is very restrictive. That means the extension we work with is has very restrictive extension, uh, restrictive condition on the ramifications, okay? So, but uh, but that's for but the point I'm gonna say is for non commutative extensions, uh. Uh, the formulas are not so precise like uh, commutative the case. Okay. So, uh, so this is just some remark I don't make. So, uh, so of course, now we go into the ideas behind Iwasawa's proof. Okay. So uh, just some basic facts. So uh, basically you can find this in a lot of books, basic ZP extension or psychonomic books. Uh, basically where ZP extension is unverified outside P. Okay. So basically the prime that can only verify is basically primes above P and there must be at least one prime that ramify. So, and basically for primes that ramify, eventually you will be totally ramified in some F if for some big enough ends. Okay. So this is again because using the gamma because the gamma groups has only the closed subgroup are well known. So you can actually basically show this uh, basically some uh, gamma to P to N. Okay. Uh, so just for simplicity, just seems as just last thing the idea. So let's just for simplicity assume that ramified primes are totally ramified. Okay. Basically, you can always do this by some base chains of Fn. Okay. And if you set Hn to be the P Hilbert class field of Fn, uh, in other words, uh, so Hn is a basically class field theory. We know that Hn based by definition is an unramified extension of Fn. And such that the Gala group is just precisely the P primary part of the class field of Fn. Okay. And since we are assuming is the total ramification, so this this uh, this is uh, an unramified extension and F15 is totally ramified. So the intersection is precisely just Fn. Okay. And so you have a natural inclusion, basically Hn include into the composite norm Hn and Fn plus one, which is of course all contained Hn plus one. Okay, so this has some ramification, uh algebraic number theory is ramification property. Okay, and of course from this inclusion, you obtain uh, you have a natural group homomorphism basically on the Gala groups. Okay, basically there's a restriction map. Okay, natural restriction map, and then there's an identification. This is just because you have trivial intersections, and okay. and of course, this then this part of course is not so trivial. This is basically uh, part of the main cross between Iwasawa's proof. Basically, you can identify basically when you work uh, when you identify this uh, the Gala group, you know it's identified with class group, and then the restriction map basically just coincide with the norm maps on the class group. Okay. And of course, when you take inverse limit of this, all this uh, basically all because of this commutative diagram, taking inverse limit, you get this uh, big gala group, which which called H, H infinity, which is just the union of H n, which I didn't define, but you can basically guess out what it is. Okay, so it's the union of all the H n, and the gala group is just inverse limit of all this uh, Hilbert, uh, this Hilbert gala group, this Hilbert class few, and of course, this is of course just as the inverse limit of the class groups. Okay. And now, because on, on the left hand side, this Gala group H infinity is a Gala extension of F infinity. And basically, using this, uh, because it's unverified, okay, it's a, so it's basically a maximal unverified extension of F infinity using the maximality. You can show that it's H infinity also a Gala of F. And so, you using this by the picture, which I then you has a natural action from F infinity acting on this Gala group. And it's called you give you a gamma action, okay. And since all of my groups are all abelian p primary and taking inverse limit, they have a natural ZP action. So that's how you get this ZP gamma action on the left. Okay. And 
uh, via this isomer reason, you induce the action. The action is indeed there's a natural action induced on this class group. Now, so basically now, uh, the reason why we want to look at uh, Iwasawa inside is because when you go into this sort of uh, rings, these rings are very well well organized, uh, well uh, known. So of course, the first thing, the first is observation is the theorem of Iwasawa to, is that this Gala group you can show is a torsion, okay? And I think I didn't write, but I mean, this ring turned out to be just isomorphic to a power series ring, one variable. Okay, so it makes sense to talk about torsion modules. Okay. And Iwasawa basically shows that this color group is torsion. And another part is from commutative algebra. So because these are just power series springs, so there's a nice structure theorems. Uh, so which I didn't put myself, but basically using structure theorem. So you can show that if your M, if you have a special if any module that's torsion and he has this property that the M coinvariant gamma N is finite, then the exponent of this E comma n has this sort of form, mu p n plus lambda n plus O one. Okay, so uh, so basically, when you look at this two observation, basically just a matter of trying to putting taking m to be the Gala group you're interested in, and see how it go back, how we relate back to the class group we have. Okay, so for this we need to, uh, so we need to appeal to the Gala theory and class group theory, which I won't uh, say too much, but Basically, if you take my faith, that basically is there's a map that goes from the big color group, coinvariant, going to the, the intermediate color, finite uh, color group on the finite part. Okay, and you can show that this map is uh, finite has finite kernel and co kernel, which bound the internal n. Okay. Now, uh, since they are finite and they have the kernel and co kernel is bounded, so you have a natural estimate between how you compare the the coin, the gamma n invariant coin and the, and the finite level. So that's exponents is just O1, okay? Now, on the other hand, by the second observation we have, we know that the, this uh, gamma n has this uh, absolute formula from the structure theorem. There's some mu and lambda such that the exponent is given by this mu to the power pn plus lambda n plus O1, okay? So then now in ju you just match this up, just combine these two up and you have your class number formula. Which is just the which you also have class formula, class formula. Okay. Is there any questions? I heard some. Okay. No questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, anyway, this is the rough. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a rough idea. So basically, is uh, basically as you see, the main two cross one main point is you basically need some integrand from the algebraic side, basically like some structure theorems enough to give you some estimate for this sort of co-invariant. And the second part is some aromatic part, which, which you have to do some sort of like this sort of what we call control theorem. Let's say more, and we will say, see more on this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so now this, we finish with up with this uh, class group. So now we prepare to define what we call the tau wow curve. Okay. So just some core module quick, uh, cohomology, some terminology. So uh, basically, some s. Uh, I take some s infinity or s p. So to be. Uh, so I think I miss some. I should say, the s. So this s is some finite set of primes which contains all the primes above p and infinity, and probably can be larger. But it's basically s is finite. Okay, and then we basically pick the maximum algebraic extension of f unrefined outside s, and you have this Gala group, which we we denote by GSF, which is just this uh, big extension over F, okay? And then I look at this mu PN, I use this notation, basically means these P primitive P PN power roots, cycle generate. So there's a natural GSF module actions, okay? Because uh, we know these more modules are unverified, uh, unverified outside P, okay? So basically for, and the point is for J greater equal to two, uh, you have a diagonal action. Basically you gotta look at this tensor, uh, J4 tensor product. So basically the mu PN tensor product by itself J times, and you use the Gala group act on it diagonally. So you can, then you give another uh, new module structure, okay, which I write as a mu PN tensor J. Okay. And uh, so as usual, we look at the inverse limit, uh, yeah, and which we call this a ZPJ, okay. Or if you like, this is what we sometimes call the take twist, the J take twist of the ZP. And so, uh, so 
Actually, I wouldn't use the Cloud Core mode. Or mode I use more on Cloud Core, but I thought I should mention this. So uh, basically, if you take inverse limit of all this, uh, this thing, so this this actually identify with the continuous core module you take. Okay, and but on the left hand side, what people some people usually do is because you, this thing is under the P, you can identify this as a Tau core module where this spec is the usual spec, the rings of OFS, where you. Yeah, you invert the primes above, invert the primes of S, in above the primes in S in this rings of integer. Okay, that's it. And so this, uh, this is why I was we will see why this when this when people study well tau wall kernel they use the tau core module, but essentially you can define using Gala groups of course. So which is most of the time I mean, if, in fact for most of my talk I will always use Gala group uh, definitions. But I thought I should mention this because uh, to sort of tell you why we call it the tau wall kernel. Okay, so the Tau wall kernel. So that basically is just the kernel of this localization map, okay, which is the CP. So here i is going to be one. So you're looking at this CP i plus one, basically the twisted by i plus one. And we have this uh, WK Tau 2IF, which is defined to be the kernel of this localization map. Okay, so, uh, so I won't say too much on this, but the, the point is uh, this group is finite. And as a matter of fact, in fact, like this. Continuous. So when I write, I should. Uh, I always drop continuous. So it should probably it should be means continuous here. But I would probably most uh, draw on my slide. I would drop this continuous notation. It's, it should be understood to be continuous cohomology. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, finite. So this is a, a non-trivial theorem, basically by Borel and Soule. Okay. So of course you may wonder why is it called Itau Wall kernel. The reason uh, I would not put this and of this notation k. Okay, the point is because uh, this thing, of course, now we know because uh, we know quillen bound project is true. Basically, this uh, continuous co merge group is actually just K2, the K, the 2IK group of the rings of energy of F, okay, or the P primary part. Yeah. So the, this actually identifies with some K2I, the 2IK group of uh, OF, okay, the P primary part of it. And that group we know is finite by a result of Borel. And of course, uh, the isomorphism beforehand, we only know there's a subjection from the K group subjects into this by Soleil. So, but that's enough for the finiteness. Of course, now we know they are the same. Okay. And so this Itau wall kernel is basically something uh, that sits in this K, this K group. Okay. Yeah. So of course, there's, uh, if you look at, if you take I to be one, so these are just a K2. So in this case, this will be K2 of OF. Which is so called the Tim kernel, some, sometimes we call. Okay, so the wild kernel are basically the elements that's in the Tim kernel that sort of, if you, you trace back this map, this is just uh, maps, uh, elements that vanish under the norm, the Tate norm. Uh, no, Tate symbol. Yeah. No, Hubert symbol. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I won't say too much, but I mean, there's this uh, wild kernel. So, uh, let me just quickly flash a slide so you'll see why you're interested in this wild kernel. There's a, there's a formulation, there's a conjecture that goes back very old conjecture that goes back to Lichtenbaum in probably in the 70s. Uh, basically, you're interested in zeta value that, that you can zeta fun functions. Okay. Basically, the value of zeta in zeta function should be related to some k groups, orders of k groups, the even k groups. Okay. So, uh, one way uh, people before when try to study is to relate use, sort of use the tau wall kernel and the way to formulate this uh, Lichtenbach conjecture is that this, uh, at least the P part of it, is that this zeta F at this minus I or I. Uh, and then when we have this multiplied as some coefficient WIF, which I defined below, basically it's just a twisted, uh, twisted mu P infinity, uh, uh, those that uh, you can find in F. And then the size of this tau wall while kernel is precisely the p primary part of this. Okay, so of course uh, I only state odd for simplicity. Uh, even is even is true. Okay, uh, if it's even, then you have the multiplier by some so-called uh, Borel regular or no Bellinson regular in this part. I think you need Bellinson regular, but whatever there is, but I won't define what there is. But yeah, but there's some result in this form. So okay, so I only also again I also say for totally real is boss so that I can avoid the regular. Uh, regulators okay so but in fact i think it's obedient it's also true with then you just have to stick in some regulators terms to come in you still have design these are all known so these are all due to essentially wow's 
uh, they make use of laws, main conjecture. And of course, I think Costa, non quando fracturing, and probably many more other people have some work on this sort. Okay. So again, uh, just is just some, uh, yeah, just some background on this wall kernel or why we are interested or why people might be interested in with our wall kernel. Okay. So in my talk, I'm more interested in how it grows and its relation to another conjecture, so called the Greenberg conjecture. Okay. But uh, let us first look at how we look at the growth of Ita Wau kernels. Okay. So again, to look at Ita Wau kernel, we basically look at it inversely. Remember the Ita Wau kernels are subgroups of defined in terms of kernel of some uh, cohomology. Okay. So, and there's natural co map between the cohomology and which induce the uh, maps in between all this Ita Wau kernel and you take inverse limit. Okay. So if you take inverse limit is natural here because if you think about the class group how we prove a class, we are actually also taking inverse limit on the, on the class group. So we are actually doing the same for the tau wall kernels. And then we look at the code GN. So here we do this for any periodic extension. So we just bring the ideas from the class group and look at this comparing this code is map. Okay. Now uh, for this code is map, actually if you, if I'm of course I'm looking at F infinity over F, but let's say F infinity is something finite over F. Okay or P extension. And the kernel and co are actually can be explicit. Okay. Uh, however, for the problem we have, since we are interested in finding estimate, having explicit nature may, doesn't mean it's good enough to estimate them. So in fact, the, the nature is so explicit, it's, I, at least I try, but it's quite complicated. So I don't know how to obtain good estimates for them. Uh, except maybe if they say F infinity, F15 is psychotomic. So I guess uh, there's some work by uh, Manfred Costa and this Saja, uh, Shaja Mova Hedi has some work on this. But yeah, but beyond psychotomic, it's very hard to control these terms, it seems to me, at least you. Uh, yeah. So uh, my approach is to turn this problem around. So by first reinterpreting the Tau Walken. Okay, so let me use some notation. So basically like tau, while can I use a check, basically means the contrarian dual. Okay. So, so the, the tau while kernel basically you can use potutate divided, basically you identify. So by taking dual, so this RIF is just precisely the kernel of H1 coefficient with coefficient QP mod ZP minus I with a twist minus I. And then this is a look, local groups. Okay. So I'm just using potutate divided to because initially it's defined H2 continuous. Okay, so by positive data, you get some H1 discrete uh, Galois homology on this QP mod ZP with minus I twist. Okay. And so of course you can read, write your RI, uh, so uh, this should be F infinity, I think. Yes, sorry. So this R infinity by taking the inverse limit. Okay, so my R infinity is, should then can pass a natural identification on this sort of picture. Okay, but now of course my primes run in F infinity. Okay, so now to look at this uh, 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 infinity to uh, the core descent map is when you take dual, it's basically looking at RIF into some R infinity uh, taking co invariant. So, okay, so or more precisely, they fit into this comedy diagram. Okay, and this comedy diagram is basically if you if you know if you read on this Iwasawa theory, if you know a bit of, if you know Iwasawa theory of elliptic curve, so this is standard things. You can find Maisel or Greenberg as a control theorem of Selma groups or things like that. Okay, so basically I'm just re reinterpreting my, in some sense, reading my Ita Walkers as so-called fine Selma group in the sense of uh, code sujata. Okay, in, in code sujata, the use e, the coefficient they use is some of the curves, p family part of the curves. So I'm just taking, in this case, I'm just taking QP mod ZP with minus i twist, where i is greater than one. But the point now, since we are not trying to estimate this kernel iron and coconut iron, so you have this picture, then you just use follow the control theorem philosophy uh, recipe. Look at the spice stick lemma, you have this uh, you have this uh, kernel iron uh, related to this kernel hn, and some cn, where cn is subgroup of kernel of gn, and you have the kernel coconut iron to coconut hn. Okay, so you want to estimate kernel iron and coconut iron. So basically you are reduced to estimating the kernel HN, coconut HN, and the kernel of GN. Okay. Now uh, all this are uh, easy to 
manage because as this is again recipe from Razor because all this uh, because these are just uh, you can use just use a hot shoe satisfactory sequence you know we sort of know how the kernel and coconut looks like okay so for example if I just look at HN so if from hot shoe set special sequence my HN is just H1 of GN of QP mod ZP with minus one twist uh, and uh, found and uh, at F infinity. So the points of all this in F infinity is okay, fixed by GSN. And then coconut HN is basically at this contain H2 of GN. Uh, okay. And so basically the problem now is uh, to estimate this HN and coconut, the kernel coconut HN basically you're reduced to just looking at how to estimate this core module, H1 of GN, where GN is just basically taking subgroups of this. Uh, periodic extension group really interesting and for example for the kernel of gn then you're also looking at some h local parts okay and of course with a slightly you know also manage the number of primes of fn above s okay because uh if you go back to the diagram you look at this you have a sum of v and xn so you also need to manage you also need to sort of uh, estimate the size of number of primes that goes up but that is usually the easy part number of primes in most of power x uh, well, it's basically you can show it's basically some O to power P to O, big O to power P, big O, uh, P to power D minus two to power N. So basically, yeah, that is easy. The part is to now we try to estimate the cohomology groups. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh, I did. Okay. Well, I want to say, uh, in if you look, if you are well, if you know Greenberg's paper, there's a composite paper of Greenberg, where he also studies or so control theorem for. Uh, but you know, varieties, okay. Uh, one part of Rimba is always he always uses he will move to Lie algebra. He's, so basically, for this sort of pair Lie groups, there's a Lie group, so there's a Lie algebra. So he look he consider Lie algebra groups, a core module Lie algebra. Okay. Uh, the problem with Lie algebra is that uh, if you look in our problem, uh, because his of course Lie algebra will tell you things as finite because you can you can show those are trivial. Basically, you're saying the corresponding core module group of the group yeah the group is fine okay but in our in our setting we also need to know how fast it grew or just fineness okay that's one problem uh, the second more important is that if you move to the algebra you can't distinguish the core module anymore okay because let's say we look at this gn so they are just open up with one another okay so that means they are finite index so the point is they share the same Lie algebra okay so that becomes a problem because if you share the same Lie algebra, that means your Lie algebra technique cannot can distinguish all these core module groups, which is not what we want. Because our problem in hand is we want to be able to distinguish all these core module groups and show how it grows as n grows. Yeah. So uh, so we have to go through uh, diff ad hoc methods. Uh, yeah. So I so uh, so for our estimate, so we basically go back to a very classical result of it. Okay, so uh, just for this, uh, so let me take uh, just see this part of this slide. So k is a few of is zero. Okay, so basically, if the k basically for example k is a finite local few or finite number few, so this part then the first part is always satisfied at least if i is not zero. Okay, my i is always greater than one. one. Okay, so that's okay. And if you know this color group k mu p infinity k is infinite, then you have this uh, h one. The H1 of this group is zero, this twist. So I guess my twist, uh, yeah. So twist is always the one. So so this is a take lemma. So telling me that this thing is trivial. Okay. So uh, of course, uh, I've just, to illustrate how we use this. So we just uh, look at the most, the simplest uh, non commutative extension that people always study, basically the force take. Okay. Uh, so or rather the Kuma extension. Okay. So basically, I'm just looking at some new PNs and then alpha with P, PN groups of alpha. And I look at this F infinity, the union of this extension. So this the color group is a ZP semi diagonal of two copies of ZP. Okay. So let me take HN to be F infinity to this, uh, say, the F at the new P infinity, new PN. So this is uh, isomorphic to ZP. And the gamma N is basically from new P infinity uh, to FN. So you have a sign with product with ZPN. And again, so you just use horseshoe say, again, basically, uh, because it's a 
direct product. So the G, uh, my GN is basically the HN and semi direct product is gamma N. Okay. So it's dimension one. So you basically can, it's dimension one. So basically all this you can split easily. Okay. You, the spectral frequency will degenerate, it give you a short SI sequence. Okay. Now, uh, so if you look at this short SI sequence, the point is we want to estimate this H1GN of QP and QP mod ZP with twisted I on. Okay. But now if you look at this uh, gamma N, so this by take lemma, this, the first term in this sequence will vanish. This is what take lemma basically say, okay? Because a uh, twist of this is basically vanished. So essentially to estimate this H1 of GN, we are used to looking at H1 of this, HN of this QPN mod ZP minus one with gamma N, okay? So for this, so okay, yeah. So for take lemma told us to tell us the first term was zero. And for the second term, since HN is acting trivially because my HN now, uh, because my HN is, is now above mu P infinity. So basically act trivially on all the mu P infinity and hence all the twists, okay. Uh, but my HN by Kumo theory, HN, the Galois group, this Galois group is isomorphic to ZP1 as gamma action because there's a twist from the Kumo action, okay. And so if you look at, if you look at the core module group of this gamma N, so this is just since HN is acting trivially, it's just home, homomorphism, it's just home of ZP1 and at QP1 at minus I, okay. And so if you, I, because uh, this controversy with the twist, it become a minus one with, with a twist of minus one minus I and gamma N. Of course, this was finite, okay. This is some uh, minus one twist and you can show this is finite and that the OPN grow is basically ON. Okay, it grows linear. Okay. And of course, you can perform the same kind of argument for local primes. So uh, in, in conclusion, so uh, basically in this uh, special case, in this case, we will get that the basically the control term is that uh, the exponents between the RIF infinity at GN minus the RIFN, okay, they differ by some ON. Of course, remember this is a dimension two. So we will see that what's how, what a general, uh, so, uh, so basically when, so I say I'm just using a two, two variable case, uh, multiple, uh, two variable uh, state, for state extension. So, but you can do this for higher other kind of extension. So we, the thing we can do is for say the median case, okay. And multiple multi for state extension, basically instead of just one alpha, we have some alpha one, alpha two, some more variables. And in the third case we can do is a elliptic curve, which is as we have no complex modification. So basically the P division point, you cut out a zero two extension, okay? And some other sort of variant, basically like zero two extension composite with the multiple take, multi four state extension, okay? So in each of these case, we can actually show that interestingly, well, maybe it's sort of expected, but I don't know how, yeah, but we can show that basically all the core which group, group is ON, okay? Uh, the only problem is that uh, although we have a uniform outcome, uh, I don't have a unif I don't have a way to sort of prove this simultaneously. So it's basically a case by case analysis. So in each case, basically, you just have to take take it, look at the problem itself and then just try to prove it by some means. Either using uh, basically using take them, you have to use take them somehow, and then basically using some concrete description of the extension you have. Okay, yeah. So it's very ad hoc at the at present, but we can somehow show that they are always ON. So, so in this in conclusion, we have our estimate between this whole P to the power D minus two N. So of course you may wonder why, why this is where this P to the power D minus two N comes from. This is basically a number of primes. Okay. Uh, so let me please move back to the slides quickly. Okay. Remember in this community diagram, there's a sum of V to SN. So there's a number of primes. Although we can bound each of these by ON, but there's a number of primes that we we'll take care. And basically the number of primes in all the, the extension that I missed uh, before, yeah, you can show that there are some, uh, they are basically P to power D minus two N, okay. So for example, in the four state case, in the, in the last recent example, where D, the four state case, D is equal to two, so you get basically O N. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in this case, but we basically get O N. So uh, of course, we have to show the prime is bounded, but yeah, you see this is the, so this is the control theorem. That, uh, in some sense, aromatic side that we have, okay. Uh, at least for this sort of extension using take lemma, okay, and some ad hoc methods, okay. And so now the missing, the next ingredient 
if we need to have is some algebraic ingredients. So, uh, so I just want to mention this, although I didn't, we probably need to use some more assumption, but this interesting note is that uh, this inverse limit of this uh, uh, Walken, Ita Walken is a torsion module. Okay. The interesting part is this uh, is full for any extension, periodic extension. So it doesn't have to be contained cyclotomic. Okay. So, uh, but it's just, uh, I don't know. This just happened to be the case. So by using basically here, we need to use, a, we have to rely on the classical result Borel. Basically, we know, we know each of them is finite and that enough to push, uh, push it to, even you, even you go into any exotic or periodic, the extension is still be torsion. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me just say a case where we have a nice formula. So basically let's say if you, this is some algebraic lemma, so which actually goes, the idea probably go back to Antonio. Okay, uh, so what I what I saw deep with my students, so we just sort of extend to more general, slightly bigger D, but essentially it's more Antonio's idea. So uh, basically you have this sort of uh, just algebraic lemma. Okay, you have this G, which is pro P, and it contains a normal subgroup, which is uh, abelian of some some D minus one, such that when you quotient out, it's still Z P. So in particular, this will work for a abelian case, but or like forced extension, multi-force extension. And if your module is something that's a fine joint of ZPH, okay, and you suppose you have this fineness property, okay, then you have this nice, you have this formula for your exponent. Okay. So remember we okay, we have a control theorem. So but to to get something on the finite, we have to solve have some sort of algebraic result on the on the on like this sort of form. Okay. And so here we have this which gives us a a formula for this or MGN for this of MGN for this of uh, rank. Okay, so if you now come apply this to say a multi force extension, just illustration. Okay, so now let me take a multi the dimension uh, multi uh, d minus one of them. So multi. So let's suppose they are all linear. So in this case, the multi force extension. So will be if you of course I had to assume some new conjecture. It was some new conjecture. So basically, it's just uh saying somehow the mu, the what I start initially, the mu invariant of this F cycle on F is zero. So basically this is to, so to, if you look at the algebraic lemma, that's the assumption that says fine general ZP. So if you, this is basically the reason why we need this, it was our new conjecture. So, so to apply that result we have, that algebraic lemma. Okay, and you have a formula for the, for the, the tau Walken. Okay. The, Exponent which grow in this sort of form. Okay, we have this uh this form O P D D minus one. Okay, remember this F is now in dimension D. Okay, because there's one more dimension coming from the new P infinity. Okay, so this we have this form. Okay, uh, seven minutes. So okay, so now once with this formula, so we see uh like I say in this, I'm more interested in how to relate this to another conjecture of Greenberg in Fisher in Wasawa theory, which a lot of people study, but we don't have a lot much to say. So let me just introduce this uh, Greenberg conjecture. Okay. So uh, just some notation for PID extension. Okay. I will use this KL to be the maximum unmodified abelian appropriate extension of this L such that every prime is above. Uh, L is split completely in this KL. Okay. And so this is a conjecture that goes back to Greenberg in 2001. So this is in a, in a and this uh, one study is Metamax. So uh, this is a volume, special volume to remember Iwasawa after he, after, he's, uh, after he passed away. Okay, and when Greenberg makes this conjecture. So if you take F to be a number of and you take F infinity to be the composite all the Z projection of F. Okay, then it's conjecture that this is pseudo now. So uh, basically, based, I didn't define what pseudo now is. Basically, it means uh, if you, it's small, or in some sense, when you localize at all the height one primes, it's basically trivial. Okay. Uh, so basically, you just if you like, we think you can think of that. It's very small, very small. It's, it's basically one level below torsion. So, okay. So it's smaller than torsion modules. Okay. okay. Maybe I should. Okay. Uh, so of course, uh, in my interest, my more I'm more interested in the commutative non commutative analog. But I should say that the non commutative analog is not always true. Okay, so there are counter examples constructed. 
by Hachimori Sharifi. So basically, you cannot just happily just take green mass condensation and replace everything by something that's non commutative Okay, then you have to expect it to be true. That's not true, but at least if your affinity has some sort of aromatic in it, so we believe it's true. For example, if affinity is some multi state extension, okay, it might be true. So, and there's some, and some evidence by from Hachimori Sharifi or even Sharifi himself. Okay. And in a case, if affinity is this uh, GL2 extension, let's say, of, of this uh, infinity curve, okay, so this non commonly analog of uh, Grimlock conjunction. So non commonly analog basically looking at the scalar group of this KF infinity over F. Infinity is a Sunov, uh, this the non-commutative mm -hmm. version of Sunovs. So then this is equivalent to a conjecture of Sujada on this fine Simon group. Okay, so called a conjecture B. So, so at least when the F infinity is so some aromatic enough, uh, there's there's hope, and this seems we at least believe that this conject this this non-commutative analog should hold. Okay, so. Uh, in, what I'm interested in is, uh, let's say if I use this multi state extension as illustration, okay. So what we can show is that uh, then basically this non common analog of this green transition is true, or in other words, this color group is true now over ZPG, where G is now the color group of the F infinity or F. Then basically it has the effect on this uh, growth of the tau wall kernel. Okay. Basically the tau wall kernel has to grow in some OP to power D minus one N. Okay. So basically the the rank has to be zero. So basically, remember if we, uh, if, if we recall the formula, that's a uh, n. There's a term. If you a priori just use algebra, the algebraic argument, we just get some terms that's coming from this MP. So basically, and so now basically saying this part is also will also vanish, like with this OP with some error term, OP the d to power n. Okay. And basically, if you know for one twist, you basically know for all. Okay. So this is this. Uh, this is the point of this, uh, what I'm interested in. Okay. And then this is the relation between the uh, Itawang kernel growth and the Greenberg conjecture. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have also have the same result for uh, a well weaker result for basically for GL2 or this GL2 composite with multi four state. So basically, we only have one implication for those stuff. For those uh, GL2 extension, we only have one implication, said, namely that we have the non commodity the Greenberg's transition is whole, then we have some uh, growth, which is very small, but instead of growth of the Ita wall kernel, we look at the Ita wall kernel FM with some PN. Okay. So the PN portion of the Ita wall kernel FFN, never FN, and we let N goes. Okay. That, so we have weaker, I mean, our statement for the other ex extension is like weaker, but for this uh, four state, we have this uh, nice result. So I just sort of present, but for the rest, it's slightly less precise. But there's something in this direction that's saying, but somewhat weaker, but some, something in this direction saying that Greenberg conjecture holds, then the Itawa kernel can go so fast. Okay. Okay. So let me just uh, s quickly say some examples. So I think. Uh, May or may not be illustrating. So again, let f to be q mod mu p. So mu p basically zeta p or mu mu p already. But let's for some reason take p irregular. I mean, if p is regular, everything is trivial. There's nothing much to talk. So uh, let's say p irregular less than thousand. Okay. So uh, calculation of uh, Romeo has calculated this uh, Gal group using his cup products, which of course leads up to his main conjecture, his Sharifi conjecture, and so on. But I mean, yeah, I'm, so anyway, there's this Gal group. You can show this Gal group is soon now. So basically, it verifies the uh, Greenberg conjecture. Okay, and basically, uh, yeah, I I only illustrate using the more default state. But for Abelian, also we have uh, basically we have some sort of analog for this result for Abelian extension too. Okay, so if you take that by faith, so basically, then you combine that result with what Sharifi, uh, what Romeo has calculated, then we have a uh, our growth for this Tau Wall can have this sort of form. Okay. Uh, still here because uh, this d here is uh, p minus one divided by two. Okay, so p minus one divided by two minus one gives you p minus three divided by two. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, it's of course it's far from optimum. Other than being, if it's regular, everything is trivial, so it's just uh, zero. Okay, but even if irregular in this uh, new p infinity, and we take the p roots of p. Okay. Uh, 
commonly should we calculation and uh, should we calculation will actually tell us that the error term the growth sorry it should be e I don't know why this op this e it should be e uh, the growth should go like o n okay so there's no uh, so it's basically as good as you can get okay so it's then with up really it should be some p to the power some uh, two d minus one so it's p op and but we can actually get o n so. This is much stronger than Greenberg's uh, prediction, but I think this is interesting. No, but I think the feeling is that uh, Greenberg's conjecture should give a uniform bound, but uh, probably is far from being optimal. But yeah, but there's still a lot, but we still a lot of mystery because uh, this conjecture is fell itself is quite mysterious. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I'll. Time, but let me just uh, I think I think have some time to say some final remark. So uh, let me just send this mentioning the following remark. Uh, lemma. Okay, this is a sort of you can think of this uh, analog of take lemma. Okay. Uh, remember in take lemma, we are looking at some QP mod CP with some fist i. Okay. So we can basically replace by the QP thing by some n uh gamma module, okay, which is called final joiner and call free, is like some QP mod CP. And basically if you suppose the H0 gamma n is finite, then you can, sh then you can show very easily that H1 gamma n is zero. Okay. So this is a very, uh, it's not difficult to see, it's just a simple observation, okay. But it's basically what, well, what uh, basically you can think of like is a extension of take lemma, okay. Because once you have this uh, sort of result, then the natural thing you can replace, it's time to talk about, let's say you replace the n by some other things like, the p primary p division points of the with the curves, okay, and essentially this is what we, what I did with uh, uh, Diban I apologize, I'm not pronouncing correctly. So Dibanjanan, okay. So basically, we use sort of this sort of lemma, so to consider the fine sum of the curve. So in this case, we are looking at we're taking n to be the p division points of the the ability curve, the between infinity division points of the ability curve. So again, it's some co-final joint call free and looking at this sort of things. And we have also had some sort of result for finding some loops and and our work also have some sort of relation bearings on the conjecture of quotes Shijata and how the conjecture sort of has some bearings on the growth of this uh, finding some groups. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, I sit my talk by three, three minutes, so uh, yeah. So I think this is the end of my talk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank questions? you. Thank you, Meng Fai. Uh, we are sort of out of time, but if there's a quick question, we can have it. Um, I, I don't can I ask a quick question? Very quick yes. question. Yes. yes. I, I just wanted to know, uh, is there any link between the Y kernels when you change I? Mm. In this case, uh, as abelian groups, because I'm thinking if I, if you if I assume my base U has mu p, uh, they are essentially the same up to abelian groups. But the twist will twist some of the action. So you have the same mu and lambda invariant, for example. Essentially, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are there any other pressing questions? I don't see any. Uh, I have some comments, but I'll share them with you privately, Mengfai. I think it's all.